So my name is Azi Bayrak. A uh, little bit of a background on that. Um, it's, a, it's a Turkish name. I uh, left Turkey in 1993 uh, to immigrate to Canada for my schooling and moved to Texas in 2000 and started my work at the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, I have been doing research and teaching classes on concrete bridges since then. And this idea on the Concrete Bridge Engineering Institute uh, came about some, oh, a handful of years ago, maybe three to five, but uh, sort of came to fruition and is gaining its legs in the, in the recent past. And I wanted to share that with the community here today. So what is this all about? It's all about workforce development and the challenges that surround us uh, in that regard. You see a lot of words here, and uh, I included those for, for the record. I imagine the slides are made available to, to the audience here. Am I correct? OK, wonderful. So it's there for your reference. Uh, it's all about bringing in new technologies, lessons learned from past mistakes, things that worked well in the past as we uh, sort of train the new generation, uh, bridge engineers, bridge professionals, uh, construction workers, any, you know, from soup to nut, anybody you can imagine uh, in the industry uh, can be trained with the lessons learned piece to where moving forward we can actually build uh, more durable bridges and better bridges uh, as, uh, to the extent we can. So the question can be, at a place like University of Texas at Austin, uh, how do you fit a new entity like uh, the Concrete Bridge Engineering Institute in a pretty formal organizational structure? Uh, so we are uh, within the Cockrell School of Engineering, and within there we have our uh, what's called organized research units, or formal laboratories. Uh, top left corner is the Ferguson Structural Engineering Laboratory that you may be familiar with. Um, we also have a materials laboratory, that's the second piece. Uh, the third piece is on the non-destructive e evaluation side, that's our smart, smart Structures Research Group. And certainly our engineering mechanics uh, folks are also involved in the process. A good example of this could be, uh, we have all these uh, NDT tools, but for example, if you're looking for a defect in a PT tendon, uh, can you use one of and the, if the answer is no, uh, and you're using um, the device that currently commercially exists, is there a way of performing the data processing to where we can get more detailed information uh, out of it? So uh, some smart um, wave mechanics based uh, things that they work on that uh, frankly I don't understand, but apparently they provide additional uh, information. So we basically work as an umbrella structure, as you can see there, and uh, if you will, that's an uh, upside down umbrella here. We do have some staff members and faculty members uh, from within the university, uh, but our network of subject matter experts are uh, from around the country. Uh, within the city of Austin, certainly we have a lot of expertise, uh, former DOT employees and such, who all expressed interest in contributing to this endeavor. On the bottom side, you see the three initial pillars on which we have been working, we're currently working. Uh, so one piece is the bridge deck construction inspection training. When we first started out, uh, we were thinking that that item actually came on board as, as the third of the three pieces, but gained popularity to where uh, I think that generates the most amount of interest. And the second most is uh, concrete materials uh, related program that we have that's uh, shown right next to it. And post tensioning academy was our starting point. And uh, that ends up being the third pillar that I will talk about uh, today here with you. So what are the services we provide? Uh, training and certification uh, is a big piece. So you see that at the top right corner. Concrete Solutions Center uh, is intended to serve as a hub uh, to where we can actu actually answer questions uh, that we're getting from um, our member, uh, members and membership. And Concrete Bridge Component uh, Collection or Library is something that we will use in not only uh, as a tool that we will use in our classes that we will teach, uh, but also, for example, for uh, deploying a new technology, a new NDT tool, and so on, it's going to serve as a national uh, resource here. 
So on the left-hand side here, we have uh, all those tabs. You see the PT Academy, uh, the bridge deck piece, and the concrete materials for bridges. And the last piece there is one that we added because uh, we wanted a very um, detailed involvement of the industry, our DOT engineers, and uh, everybody and anybody who has been supporting this endeavor. And any time we sit down to have a discussion on uh, those three pillars, there's always this next idea that comes about, well, how about including this in the program and so on? So we have a placeholder for that or a parking lot, if you will. And as we hear these good ideas, we're basically jotting those down. And as we move forward, uh, these activities will expand. So physically, for those of you who have been to Austin, Texas, um, and who have seen our research laboratory, so this is at the north end of town. At the left corner there, Ferguson Structural Engineering Laboratory has been clearly marked. Uh, that is our large-scale testing facility. Uh, you can see that Cockrell School of Engineering set aside some land for our use, immediately adjacent to it, and that location is important and I will say challenging in different ways, and I will talk about those. Uh, it is important because it's close to our structures lab and there is a lot of cross-pollination that goes on uh, between research that gets conducted in our structures lab as well as the materials lab. So if you go immediately underneath that Texas label, that red brick building is our concrete materials laboratory. And again, graduate students and researchers, professors working in these buildings can have easy access to this uh, piece of land. Well, what's so challenging about it? Well, it just so happens it's a very highly valuable corner of uh, city of Austin. So uh, we have it in our hands right now and we will uh, keep it for the next uh, several decades to come. But as the value of the property goes up, we're gonna be facing some challenges, but such is life. So within there, you can see the three labels for the bridge deck piece, uh, the materials piece, and the PT laboratory. And we have actually done a fair amount of planning and some construction, and I will share those with you as well. So let's talk about the PT lab for a brief moment. Uh, again, this is soup to nuts, uh, all activities that goes into post-tensioning, full-scale elements, uh, having to install the strands, the ducts, uh, stressing, grouting, uh, anything and everything that you can imagine. So we will be using post-tensioned beams. Hands-on uh, is a huge piece of what we intend to do. Uh, so hands-on training on components, post-tensioning systems, again, installation, stressing, grouting, testing and inspection, remediation, what if something goes wrong during the grouting process, what to do, how to remedy that. Uh, new technologies that are coming on, on board, such as electrically isolated tendons and so on that uh, we have been hearing or, and becoming familiar with. Um, if you wanted to get a little more detailed within that plot of land, uh, you can see different areas marked for different activities, uh, post-tensioning system uh, validation. Uh, we will be conducting activities on elongation reconciliation, and if there's an issue with it, how to tackle that problem. Rebar congestion issues will be tackled in the area that is earmarked for that, as you may or may not be able to see with the red labels there, but if you can't see it now, you will have it in your, uh, in your reference. Again, constructability, constructability related issues, grouting defects, uh, surface preparation, all those items uh, are, are, are things that will get covered in our formal training classes. Uh, bridge deck construction inspection piece was an idea that came about through our discussions with our state bridge engineer, Graham Bettis, in the audience today. Um, I asked him the question on, well, how big a problem is bridge uh, deck construction rel related issues? And I believe his response to me was this, if I recall correctly. Uh, it was on Zoom, so I couldn't quite tell how big is this, but I understand it's huge. Um, in the state of Texas, we use subdeck panels as stay-in-place formwork. Uh, that's a technology that is used by some states, but not all. Uh, Federal Highway just completed um, 
a, a research or a state-of-the-art document uh, to, in an effort to increase the use of these subdeck panels. So that will serve as a basis for that portion of the bridge deck piece. But again, this is intended to be a national resource uh, and full depth cast in place construction issues that go with it and such uh, will all be covered in our programs. So what are we doing here? There is the training piece. There is the how to uh, get the best inspection we can to make sure that we have the most durable bridge decks that we're constructing, alongside of uh, bringing some new technologies. As an example, we're uh, looking at using some wire trusses. Uh, this technology that uh, is, is from Spain, actually, uh, is where it originated. Uh, top right corner, you see a picture of uh, overhang brackets and having to construct that deck overhang is rather uh, labor intensive activity. And by using this technology from Spain, we're looking into eliminating uh, the use of those overhang brackets and expediting uh, bridge deck construction. So the research is integrated into, into the training programs as well. So what's all in there? Uh, proven details, what worked well, innovative practices, um, issues we had in the past. Uh, we're gonna end up, again, using full-scale components, uh, basically built in some defects that we can discuss, uh, the people that were training, the inspectors that were training. Past issues, potential pitfalls, building problems is what we will have in our um, DEC program. And again, we will integrate research fundings and we talk about uh, different alternates in bridge deck construction. So here is an overall depiction of what we envision thus far. Uh, it's a three-span, four-beam bridge. It will be constructed, uh, different bays will be constructed and finished to different degrees uh, to where we can talk about how you would go about using a bridge paver, uh, how do you do the grading, uh, panel installation, the do's and don'ts. Um, just uh, in terms of uh, national uh, sort of p participation, I was just in Florida a couple months ago. Uh, we will be bringing along some um, pieces from Florida DOT's library where the bed stripping uh, underneath the subdeck panels were installed incorrectly. That created issues for Florida. So we will have those samples in Austin, Texas, and use those in our training on uh, what not to do as an example. Again, we're discussing full-scale components. Hands-on is a big piece of it, and as the standards and specs change, uh, we will be implementing those uh, into our programs alongside of uh, best practices by the industry. For whom? Inspectors, engineers, contractors, erectors, installers, uh, precast producers, suppliers, so people from all walks of life uh, on concrete bridge construction uh, will be passing through, helping us teach these classes or get trained and get certified in our programs. On the concrete material side, so this is one of the three pillars, and in fact, the first one to hit the scene, it will be ready in January of uh, next year, so in the next four or five months here. Uh, my colleague, colleague Kevin, Kevin Foliard, actually leads that program over the years. He has done a lot of work on concrete durability, alkali silica reaction, delayed ettringite formation, and all kinds of issues that challenge concrete construction. Um, so those are the items that will be covered as part of that program. You can see the corrosion here, uh, ASR, DEF, crack evalu evaluation, um, post-tensioning grout evaluation. In the recent past, we got into some, uh, some materials issues in our PT grout, so that will be covered here. What to do and what not to do with our mass concrete and designing concrete for, uh, for the modern environment is an item that uh, also we would like to cover. And as to um, what is shown in the picture on the left-hand side is it's the yard that my colleague uses uh, to create different types of ASRs and DEFs and all kinds of other concrete degradation problems in an effort to show people what these different types of problems look like and what to do about them, again, in a hands-on uh, fashion. Uh, in the picture, you see a segment uh, that we recovered from a bridge that was recently decommissioned, segmental bridge, uh, precast segmental bridge, in fact, decommissioned in Austin, Texas, not necessarily due to performance issues, 
uh, but strictly to readjust the bridge geometry in an effort to improve the traffic flow is what was done there. Uh, alongside of that, if you can see some additional components, uh, we have a band cap uh, from Abilene, Texas that I can see, a column capital to the left, and the list goes on, all right? Um, and again, uh, we're looking into uh, making this uh, bridge library available for people from all walks of life, inspectors, engineers, contractors, and the like. Um, and um, again, uh, we will have classroom training, hands-on training. There are discussions underway of making some of this training available online prior to moving on to hands-on components, either at CBEI at Austin, Texas, or through different efforts, we're looking into developing an East Coast and a West Coast uh, satellite units as well uh, for easier, easier access to some, uh, some states. Uh, I believe I have covered all of these items, but sustainability, the last piece there is, is an important one. That's a challenge that we all face, and we intend to offer uh, some help in that regard as well. Uh, we talked about the future needs tab, and this is when uh, anytime there's a gathering of the sort, uh, we hear good ideas, either, either during formal sessions or coffee breaks and the like, uh, and we, we are keeping track of those and we intend to uh, expand the reach of our training programs in that sense. So we have three different levels of membership. I will talk about it here in a moment. Uh, there is an open uh, transportation pool funding solicitation at three different levels, tier one, two, and three. Uh, we provide different numbers of seats of training for different uh, state DOTs alongside of uh, access for live training, online training, and um, again, uh, some hours set aside for the Concrete Solutions Center. So that's technical support for the projects. Uh, the second bullet that you see here is in-person custom workshop uh, that we will make available to our level one members. Uh, remote live training modules will be made available for tier one and two members. Uh, we will have webinars, technical information, documents. Uh, really, it will serve as a hub for sharing information and new technology implementation when we get all done. So the Concrete Bridge Component Collection uh, work is ongoing. Uh, as I showed you, the land has been set aside. Uh, we have actually built a structural slab at the tune of, I believe, $185,000 or plus or minus, that's the, that's the number. Uh, so this is a slab that's capable of carrying the heavy loads that will be present on it. Um, and again, the school is committed to uh, provide us the support as we move forward in this endeavor. So here is a snapshot of the TPF announcement number 1580. Uh, this particular screen capture was taken only some weeks ago, I wanna say maybe four weeks ago. I checked it prior to this talk uh, of the targeted uh, goal of, uh, I can't read the numbers here, but uh, slightly shy of $3 million, I think, 2.8. Two thirds of that funding has been uh, secured up to this point in time. Federal Highway Administration, uh, Texas Department of Transportation, Utah, Pennsylvania are the numbers that are, or the places that are in mind, or sponsors, I should say. And again, it's an open solicitation and we're looking for others to join in and take a seat around the table as we're discussing the details of these programs to where Actually, we can serve the community the way we should serve the community. Um, so you can see some dates uh, for each one of the three programs here. In our year one, uh, January of this year, concrete materials program will be deployed. Um, towards the end of 2023, in September, uh, you will see the bridge deck inspection uh, program come alive. And finally, on our year three, our PT laboratory will be functional and be used in training. We have been working closely with the industry. Uh, as part of that, we have been engaging the National Concrete Bridge Council members, uh, you can, and CBC members. Uh, you can see the list at the bottom side of that slide there. Uh, we're trying to make sure that, again, uh, although the, these efforts are primarily sponsored by uh, state DOTs and federal highway, uh, they're basically in line with the current industrial trends and uh, needs. And uh, 
the best way to do that that we know of is just to have an advisory panel and have frequent meetings and uh, remain engaged with our industrial partners. So we have done it, we're doing it, and we will do it in the future as well. So here's a quick side update. You can see the pieces are arriving uh, from different projects. Uh, we have looked into these pictures, so I will not further articulate uh, what each one of those components are. Um, the pieces that you see here, the picture on the top left corner, uh, those are trap girders, pretension girders uh, from US 59 corridor uh, that we obtained in Houston, Texas. The girders were rejected for the fact that the interior void floated, so the geometry was not what it needed to be. But then again, it served as a good learning tool because the concrete that was used in constructing the uh, the girders ended up being prone to ASR and DEF, so there is good examples of what that damage looks like, and we intend to use that in our uh, teaching programs. The upside down caps that you see on the right hand side uh, had some shear reinforcement detailing that was quite interesting. Uh, those older 1950s vintage uh, substructures were taken out of commission, and we actually trucked them over to Ferguson Laboratory, tested them. Uh, understood their structural behavior so we can speak to it uh, in our classes and kept them, uh, set them aside for training purposes and a portion of what you may not be able to see is CFRP repairs and the like. So all those items again will be integrated in our teaching programs. It's always nice to take a look at fresh concrete so that's what you're seeing in this picture. You can tell I'm a concrete person, huh? So uh, you can see all, uh, our structural slab. Uh, that is the slab that I have been talking about. Uh, deep foundation installation on the left-hand side to carry these heavy pieces. And finally, uh, what I would like to leave you with is my contact information alongside of the Deputy Director of EI, Greg Hansiker, who has been putting a significant shoulder and has been a great resource to us. At any questions for me? I do have one question. I'm going to delay you a little. I'm so sorry. Um, sorry, I got to get going. <laughs> <laughs> um, you talked about certifications. Do you currently, are those in place yet, or is that going to be part of the program when you're done? And exactly what type of certifications are those going to be? Do you know? Are so uh, they are in the making, uh, and certifications for the for example, the bridge deck inspection certification piece, um, we will be relying on, I'll just be honest with you, Techstat's uh, vision on uh, how they see that piece like, because in early discussions with them, uh, from what I understand, just as state employees, we have, the number is at, uh, roughly about 1,000 people or something like this, or maybe even more than that, and there is the third party inspectors in the picture too, so these are some big numbers. Again, uh, we don't intend to sit at a university and try and guess what will work best for a, for a bridge owner or the industry. So it's all about getting people involved in the process and to where, as we're coming up with these inspection programs, we can actually address the need at the, at the face value and uh, be useful in that sense. For example, on the post-tensioning side, there is existing programs through PTI uh, and ASBE, these are intended to augment what's out there and um, sort of uh, get inspectors to be better certified or better trained uh, than what they are currently, uh, but not necessarily replicate what's already out there on the grouting side and things of that nature. So we have a construction quality working group through the preservation partnership. And um, part of that, is, that challenge sometimes is that um, uh, compared to pavements, for instance, um, there's, there's a lot of certification for different types of pavement work. There's so much of the work. Um, with bridges, it's a, it's, it's, I will say it's more detailed and intricate work, but, <laughs> so but, but it is, it, it, it's, there's not as much of it. And so there's really not a lot of certifications that, right that are out there and available now. Right. And I think it might be something that is beneficial because if you have, at least you know that they're trained to this level and, um, and, and so I think it's a good idea. I think it's great. 
Exactly, and thank you for, for your comments. Uh, for the pavement versus bridge side of it, for example, let's take the concrete materials piece. We have had several meetings with the, concrete, um, with the Federal Highways concrete material experts and their mobile laboratory that's primarily intended uh, for the pavements uh, side of our lives, uh, just to make sure that what is getting built here does not replicate effort. For example, we identified that on the durability side, um, they don't do much within their training programs, so the emphasis here is, is on those pieces. And we intend to keep that open communication, because there is nothing worse that we can do in basically duplicating effort. I'm just curious, because you just mentioned PTI, and, and because I see uh, Greg's name on one of your, uh, your final slide here. Uh, regarding the post tension in training that you were referring to, and you already mentioned that PTI has uh, some certification programs. So the training that you intend here is going to be equivalent to the PTI training, or is going to be an introductory, or is going to be above? Uh, so it's above, and we have been working. Well, Greg knows PTI better than I will ever learn PTI, I think. I, I know PTI to some extent, but uh, uh, he is much more integrated into PTI processes. We have been working with Tony as well on, the, uh, on that particular item. And uh, so, for example, there is the grounding, uh, grouting training that ASBE offers and grouting certification and things of that nature. There is a lot of PTI training that takes place on the post-tensioning side but a great majority of it is an in-class training. So over here, the hands-on piece is, is pretty significant. And uh, I don't know if I showed uh, enough details here, um, but for example, uh, one PT supplier has their own training facility in two different con countries, as I understand it, Portugal and uh, someplace in the Far East to train their own people. Uh, but that's not necessarily universally available to all PT suppliers. And there, you're talking about having to install the ducts and the feed the strands and do the stressing and create potentially a problem and get people to work on that. All of this is hands-on, so this ends up being over and beyond uh, what's, what's being offered today. And the value of that is is to me huge. In the recent past, the concrete industry got into some um, grout-related issues, post-tensioning related issues and such. So apparently, we got to do something differently. And so it's intended to address that, that need, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.